And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul Durienzo, your host, and we have another great show in store for you. My guest with me in the studio, Nancy Wolf. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you very much. Nice having you here. And we've talked before, because Nancy and we've done interviews before. Nancy is uh, producing, directing, and what have you, a film, a documentary film called Rocky Flats. And we're going to talk, we're going to show you a clip from that film in a minute, so stay tuned. But we're going to talk about if you've ever heard of a place called Rocky Flats, which is in Colorado, outside of Denver, which is the big city in Colorado. It's a western state way out there in the mountains. Some of you might not have heard about it, but it's out there and it's sort of a cool state. Marijuana is legal there. Can you believe it? Has been for a number of years. Um, and you can, you could, they have marijuana drive-ins which I found interesting. <laughs> Much more interesting than the liquor store drive-ins, which I found in California. Uh, and, uh, but there is a dark history to all this uh, fun and games. Right? It's not always fun and games, especially when you're building atom bombs. And Rocky Flats is the place where they built the atom bombs, triggers to the atom bombs. Well, Nancy will explain that more to us in a moment. And uh, there's some fascinating stories behind that. And this documentary really needs to be done. It's very important that yeah. you do this documentary. And that's why you're here in large part, because I think what you, the work you're doing deserves support. And I know you're here to ask for support. We're not going to talk about money, dirty thing that we all need, right? <laughs> but we're going to talk about support and help and what you can do to learn out more about mm -hmm. this project. So we'll give you those, have your pen and pencil ready to write down uh, email addresses and uh, whatever you need to know to find out more about this great movie. So that said, welcome to the show, Nancy Wolf. Thank you. And how did you learn about Rocky Flats? Oh, well, I learned about Rocky Flats through my last film, Fit to Print. I executive produced that film, and we were looking for stories, investigative reporting stories, that could have slip, slipped through the cracks when newspapers were shutting down in 2009, 2010. Mm -hmm. And we learned about an investigative reporter named Laura Frank, and she was covering the story of nuclear workers not being able to get the full compensation after getting cancer mm -hmm. after cancer after cancer. So we, we went to Colorado to basically cover the closure of the Rocky Mountain News and interview her and some of the folks in her stories. And after I came back from that trip and we were editing and getting the film ready, I just just was stuck on the story and it really moved me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I read Kristen Iverson's book, Full Body Burden, and then I learned even more. And I realized basically that I knew nothing. And I kept learning how little I knew about mm -hmm. the nuclear weapons complex, about nuclear waste. And I don't know, I knew that I knew nothing about nuclear waste. Do you know about, about New waste. York's role in that, New York City? I they do, I they do. They didn't call it the Manhattan Project for nothing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, people, there's many places in New York City that were active sites in development of the first atom bomb. This mm -hmm. is where it originally started. Columbia University, I meet people all the time. Talked to one old guy who uh, just retired. He worked up at Columbia University. Mm -hmm. He helped tear down the lab just recently that had been there since the 1930s where they did oh. the first experiments. Yeah. And uh, he said it was all hush hush. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, why are you telling me? And he says, I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> it's very hush-hush, this stuff, right? Yeah. You found, did you find it hush-hush? Um, well, I mean, certain aspects of it, for instance, workers will not talk much about, well, they can't talk much about what they did because, you know, they could lose their compensation. They could lose all their benefits if they talk about what they did there. So Classified all, information. Classified information, and they need that funds to help with all the cancers that they got from working there. What exactly did they do at Rocky Flats? So they were, they were building bombs. They were building um, 70,000 nuclear weapon, nuclear triggers for the bombs for the Cold War. And this was an operation from 1952 till 1992, and it was actually shut down by the federal government. It was the first time that one federal agency shut down another federal agency. This was the Justice Department to the Department of Energy. And so that happened, um, that was a 1989 raid on the plant. I'm gonna ask you more about that in a minute. We have a clip from the film, right? Yes. Let's check the a clip from the film. We're gonna come back and we're gonna deal with this 
fascinating story that so few people know anything about it. When you find out about it, you say, really, this happened in America? Watch the video, we'll be back in a minute. Do you know that at the center of the site is a nuclear Superfund site? You know, I was hoping that the more research I do on it, the calmer I would get. But instead, the opposite happens. The more you learn about Rocky Flats, the more difficult it is to believe that this is considered normal. I don't think you have to know nuclear science to understand that something is wrong out there. I'm Michelle Gabriloff Parrish. I'm the mother of three and a wife that lives in Superior, Colorado. And I ended up founding Candela's Glows once I realized how close we live to Rocky Flats and all of the other issues that surround that area. If this is your first action around Rocky Flats, can I see hands up? When I started out, I had had a few people tell me, be careful, you're going to piss off some really powerful and really rich people in the area. This is where the contamination used to come from Rocky Flats. Now Stanley Lake is known for being lined with plutonium. Rocky Flats is a former nuclear weapons manufacturing site where they made the plutonium triggers for the Cold War. Well, the part of the bomb they were making at Rocky Flats is the dangerous part, and that it's basically a nuclear super fun site at its core. The story of Rocky Flats doesn't go well into the container of an idea of what they think of as this area. You know, this area, people are coming here to be outdoors. I'm not just going to be silent about something that I know is happening within visual distance of my house. All right, wow, Nancy Wolf, that's your film, a yeah. clip from it. Um, so what, what did we just see there? What, describe that for us, because yeah. it's a lot to take in. Yeah, so that's Michelle Gabrieloff Paris. She started a group called Candelis Glows, and they were started to basically protest this housing development that cropped up, and that is actually at the buffer zone mm -hmm. of the Rocky Flats original Superfund site. So she found out that that yeah. the houses were being built, that there was a toll road coming, and she took it upon herself to start organizing and learning more. And so uh, that's her describing her role and, and her motivation. And that piece, we wanted to do a character piece on her and show um, the humanity of someone because the premise of the film is really, what would you do if you realized that you lived near a nuclear Superfund site? What is a Superfund site for folks who might not know that? So Superfund sites are like the worst, the worst of the worst. There, uh, there's contamination. Um, for instance, uh, one that's not too far from us would would be a Go the Gowanus Canal. That's, I was just thinking that's, of that. That's definitely a super fun <laughs> yes. site. Um, so they're they're very nasty places, and um, they're not really somewhere you may want to live. Mm -hmm. um, if you would pick places to live, you probably don't want to live next to one of those. So uh, earlier on, is, uh, so Rocky Flats was a place where they made the triggers that went into the atomic bomb. Yeah. Right? The trigger is the, uh, the hydrogen bomb, really. Right? And the, so the trigger is like the, the pit, the thing that's right mm -hmm. inside it. And they, it's, a, it's a thing that starts the whole reaction going. Exactly. Right? And they, they put those together there. So mm -hmm. this is at the end of a huge system. It, it wasn't just like by itself. It was part of a whole national system. Right? Yeah, and then they were, so then once they went from Rocky Flats, they went to Pantex and Texas to be put together. Assemble the trigger, put into the actual bomb. Yeah. Right. So uh, what, wh why is this a super fun site? Why are people so terrified about what happened there? And, and what is the, you know, the government is trying to turn this into a park, right? Yeah. And so it's open ground. It wasn't always open fields, right? Correct. What was there before? Um, I mean, there before was a, was a 
nuclear weapons plants and the buffer zone was just sort of this area that they basically expanded the area to say, well, you know, we don't want people to go into this area because it's pretty close mm -hmm. to the operations. Um, so what, what led to them closing it down? Uh, well, there was this FBI raid, um, and that was because they were actually um, burning plutonium at midnight. Burning plutonium at midnight. So uh, there were these... What is plutonium? What is plutonium? Yes. Um, I never assume anybody knows anything. <laughs> well, uh, I know a little bit, but I'm not as, as good as, as the folks I got in my film, so I'll say right, that. Right, right, That's all right. But um, it, it's the stuff that goes into an atom bomb. Yeah, it's is the stuff it dangerous? that goes into the bomb. It's, it's definitely dangerous. and um, It it's causes got, cancer. It causes and cancer. Um, and, of course, when you when it's radiated, when mm -hmm. there's an accident, say a fire, for instance, yeah. then you can have radiation poisoning. So right. you can have like the immediate effects and then um, and then you can get lung cancer, you can get all sorts of diseases. Right. When we interviewed um, workers there, um, they had multiple cancers. So one after the other. And that's right. and that's the stuff that really shocked me was learning about multiple cancers. I, I thought, okay, yes, someone could get lung cancer, but when you have like two or three cancers per person, that, that was mm -hmm. pretty shocking to me. Right, and, and so what led to this investigation that led to this confrontation between the Department of Justice and the Department of Energy? Well, so there were whistleblowers, um, actually, that came forward. Aren't there always? Of course, we love them. Um, so there were, there were uh, a couple of whistleblowers that, that it said their story, and then also what happened is that FBI, the FBI agent on the, on the team, um, John Lipsky, he actually, um, they, he led the raid on the plant, um, and they had these Why infrared they? cameras. Yeah. And that's how they spotted the plutonium being burned at midnight. They were watching the site with infrared cameras, and exactly. they saw a blo a, you know, an orange blob going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 they saw, they saw the chemicals, and so they said, okay, this is our evidence, so let's go in there. So they decided at that moment to go in. Yeah, they said the to FBI, go in. The FBI style, right? Yeah. Do they go in like with 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 suit sport coats, or do they go in with the uh, SWAT teams? Oh, um, I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I didn't think you were. But uh, so they. But I heard there was a confrontation at the gate. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. Tell us about that. What happened? Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that it was. <laughs> it was not. It was not quite expected. Um, the FBI coming in there wasn't yeah. expected as it ever. I yeah. Imagine. Sure. Uh, so uh, when they their security responded, mm -hmm. thinking they were being assaulted or something. Oh yeah, that's yeah yeah. And so they could have been like the Department of Justice and the Department of Energy could have gotten in a gunfight. Oh uh, sh yeah, who knows? I mean, uh, it was it was a very strange situation, and it had never happened before. Um, and you know, there were these environmental crimes that that uh, that the contractors at Rocky Flats had committed. Um, against the Clean Air Act and serious business. So is the government, but the go a contractor for the government means the government is responsible. The government's responsible. So the government is raiding the government. Exactly. That's unusual. It's very unusual. Seems, at least it seems to me, right? Yeah. Right. So the government. Is, so what did this lead to? This well, raid. So what the happened? raid actually led to a grand jury investigation. Um, however, the grand jury investigation did not. It's a very weird story with the grand jury investigation. Actually, mm -hmm. currently, one of um, the lawyers for the environmental groups right now is actually trying to get these documents available to the public, uh, the grand jury documents. But the they're grand still sealed. They're still sealed. Um, and so what happened is that the Justice Department decided not to indict, even though the grand jury members wanted, agreed that they should indict. So. I've never heard of that either. Yeah, yeah. The opposite. So I've it was heard sort of this back that. deal, you know, yeah. you know, behind the scenes deal. And um, the folks on the, a couple of folks on the grand jury, one of the folks on the grand jury, the foreman, Wes McKinley, we've interviewed him and talked about him. And Is he allowed to talk about what happened in there? He did write a book called, okay. the, yeah, he wrote a book. He wrote a book about it. Okay. Uh, and, did, did and he ran for Congress, and he basically, they've been trying to release this information um, mm -hmm. because it's very important, and it, it 
would be very important for folks that are living in the area thinking about moving to mm -hmm. one of these houses. They would like to know yeah. what is buried underground. Right, let's take that. So they, at some point after this grand jury, they decided to close down Rocky Flats. Yes, so essentially that was the end. Well, well let's think about it this way. Um, Bush decided to end the nuclear weapons production program. That ended it. That that officially ended it. Bush so. one or two. Um, Bush one. Mm -hmm. George Bush. It was the Soviet Union collapsed. It was uh, the Russians now come to the U.S. and actually participate in our bomb program. I don't mm, know how for long that's yeah. going to go on, but <laughs> so we watch each other. In other words, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so they've let them in. They we, everybody stepped back from the brink for a moment. Now we let everybody in to inspect each other's stuff to mm -hmm. make sure we're not making super bombs or anything like that. This was yeah. part of that whole pro pro process. Oh, perhaps, perhaps. Okay. And so uh, what did they do with, the, they ripped everything down and then it was, even after they took everything away and demolished the buildings and left, it, it wasn't okay after that. No, I mean, there, so there was a cleanup that was actually supposed to take 70 years, but, and. Let's repeat that again. How many years? It was supposed to take 70 years, seven zero, and ended up taking seven Years. Is that because they were so good at it, or because they that didn't is, do a very good yeah, job? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's 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 what's contentious a bit. Um, so essentially, they cleaned up the site for a lot less money and a lot less time. And so there are folks that don't believe that um, that they did a good job. So that's what's called into question. And the specific thing that's called into question really is this buffer zone area, this area that is now um, a wildlife refuge and the area of which these houses are built up against. Right. Where the buildings actually are is a relatively small area. Yes. And that's fenced off. That's fenced off. But the buffer area, which was created at the time, and you see that a lot. If you go to Hanford, the buffer area for Hanford is humongous. And, yeah. And, and it's, you know, the area around Hanford, if you know Hanford and Washington is where they made plutonium. Yep. Uh, the area around it that was used as a buffer zone to keep people from being able to see what was going on mm -hmm. is undeveloped in an area with a lot of development in the last 20 years. So Same like thing you, Colorado. Right. You come, yeah. there's all these buildings and houses, and then you come to all of a sudden nothing. And, they, and it's a wildlife refuge, but people are saying this whole wildlife refuge out of nuclear buffer zones. It's it, a thing. It's a, but it's a whack thing. It's a whack thing and, you know. Why? It's. In your opinion. In, well, it, you know, to me, it's just this bizarre thing that the Department of Energy is excitedly calling this from weapons to wildlife. They're calling this land. That's that's their campaign is from weapons to wildlife, sort of and they're very. Sort normalizes nuclear weapons. It normalizes right? it, but it's it's they're serious. They're not making a joke, and I it's it sounds funny. It sounds like it's a joke because why would you think from weapons to wildlife? Why would you equate the mm -hmm. that something to kill so other people? So they're encouraging people. people to go there and to recreate. Yes, 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 they are. And is that a cool thing? Um, I don't. Th Personally, I would not, definitely would not go and recreate in um, somewhere that previously had been making nuclear weapons. That's not is something that I would be comfortable doing. For, out of moral reasons or health reasons? Um, definitely out of health reasons. I would definitely not be going somewhere where yeah, there are the, things the that are supposed to kill people. Getting back to plutonium, one infinitesimal small speck of plutonium is enough to cause lung cancer. Yes, and the thing is, so if you breathe in one particle, just one yeah. particle, um, it will just stay in your system and bounce back and forth, back and forth. It's just a real, like having an x-ray machine inside you all the time. I don't know. Yeah. That's how it was described to me. All right, so, uh, oh, I, very interesting. So the community there, I want to get to you, talk about you mm -hmm. a little bit in a minute, but I want to wrap this part of it up. W the community there is up in arms that they're, turn that they're turning this place near where they live into a, uh, into a place where children are invited to go in and the yes. Boy Scout troops can come in and camp out and people can hike and they're promoting this, but the local people are horrified. Yeah, yeah. There are several groups that are organized there. Um, there's a group called Rocky Flats Right to Know. They're very active in the community, um, and they have been sounding the alarm. Um, there's a highway that's going to be that's slated to be built, but is now on pause, um, called the Jefferson Parkway. And 
well, a, a parkway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Beautiful. this Denver. Just to draw Denver. people to draw people in to you know the parkway is the purpose. The reason they call it a parkway is because it's supposed to bring you to a park. Right. Well, this this is so Denver has this whole traffic issue. I mean, it's yeah. you're, you're in traffic all the time when you're driving around, and so they say, well, this will ease traffic congestion. Okay. If you just drive through a nuclear west way zone, where yeah. you can breathe in, where there's still little bits of plutonium everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, do people go out there with their with you know with uh, Geiger counters and find it? You know, people do, but the thing is with uh, alpha radiation, which is what plutonium you know, consists mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. the, uh, the particles will move. So if you use your Geiger counter on one spot, um, yeah. then maybe the next day, that spot won't be radioactive right, because, because it's, it's moving. It's actually little bits of stuff. Yeah, and they're splitting off. Yeah, uh -huh. They're splitting off and moving. So oh, it's like it's alive. Mm -hmm. I know people who work with radiation always, I've read that several, t I've had people tell me, they, they refer to it almost like it's a living thing. Yeah. Yeah. Radiation is almost like a living thing. It's actually always in motion, mm -hmm. changing and transforming, finding its way. And it has this inane knack for getting inside of living things and humans at the top. It gets it almost like it's like like a science fiction movie, like <laughs> coming right. out of you, yeah. coming for you. You know, it, it, because of its affinity for your bone and different things. In your yes, body. that's the, yeah, the yeah. yeah. You know, it has affinity for your. I know I'm sort of making it a little bit, but it, it's true. People have often referred to it as they think it's almost alive, the way radiation is very yeah. difficult to. Well, control. it has certain areas that's attracted to as yeah, well, like I, the reproductive it, areas. Oh, that's terrible. You know. So okay, good. So so now we have a good sign. Now, how did you become a filmmaker? Oh, how to become a filmmaker. Yes, let's go back. Let's talk about you for a minute, oh, Nancy wow. Wolf. And t let's tell people how they can help you finish this movie. Yeah. How can they do that? Oh, well, um, my website is werewolfproductions.com. How do you spell it? W-H-E-R-E-W-O-L-F-E. -E -E. And you're Nancy P Wolf. Yes. Right. Uh, P-R-O-D-U-C. T-I-O-N. Yeah, where, werewolfproductions.com. Dot com. Word, where W H E R, like where is the wolf? W -O -L -F -E, exactly. Productions.com. And that's my production company. So good. And people yeah. can find out all about this mm -hmm. there and help you out and things like that. They think this is really important. I'm sure there are people out there who do. Um, all right, uh, Nancy Wolf. So again, how did you become a filmmaker? Well, um, I went to I went to the new school uh, and I graduated in two thousand. 2007, yeah, 2007, mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. that. Um, so I actually made a little documentary as part of my little thesis there, I made a, a documentary about YouTube and uh -huh. what YouTube was kind of doing back mm -hmm. then in 2007 when it just launched. Sure. So we made a little doc there and then I actually I worked in, um, I worked at a newspaper for a couple years um, and then after that I got- So you have reporter chops, you've been a reporter. I, yeah, I've, I've done, yeah, I've done that. Um, I also used to write about music, write about um, uh, books. Um, mm -hmm. So I've kind of done a lot of, uh, dabbled in a lot of different areas. I also did some work um, sort of reading through yep. um, sort of cancer studies as part of a, a part-time, you know, mm -hmm. gig I had. So I kind of had that knowledge right, coming right. in here, which helped me a lot. Right. Um, so knowing kind of like maybe what radiation is like or how, how yeah, some of you these started developing an interest in it. It's weird because it's really dark, but yeah, I mean, it I, is, I yeah, well, it's a lot. It seems like it's alive, doesn't it? And it gets into your body and it causes cancer. Well, it's this invisible killer, and I think that's part of what the radiation thing, it, you know, attracts me to. That is, is it? It's so, it's so it's hard than to a deal with. Killer, right. Very interesting. Well, and it's uh, you mentioned seventy years cleanup. They did it in seven, yeah. which is ridiculous. Yeah, Hanford is a hundred years minimum cleanup. But they can't even they can't even go in there because it's too dangerous. And it's uh, what I was telling. It's a hundred years before they can go in. They've yeah. sent robots in before they, it's, it's down enough to uh, to. So radiation. So uh, one of the reasons why nuclear energy is not as popular as it used to be in the United States. Correct. And why we talk about Fukushima in frightening terms. Yeah. You know, six of them went down. You know, pretty amazing. Um, okay. So uh, now this uh, this whenever I talk about nuclear radiation and mm -hmm. all the cancers and the downwinders and the people who live near these plants who had yeah. no idea that they were for decades being uh, exposed to cancer causing chemicals and the cancer clusters that occurred in all these different places. One of the things that complicates this issue is that we don't have any sort of single payer or national health 
That's system. true. Yeah. So people have to pay for your own health care or have insurance to cover it. And if you get cancer from your association with the government laboratory, the government laboratory sues and has armies of lawyers to disprove mm -hmm. that you got the cancer from them. Yes, yeah, this causation. So you have to prove causation that what you did directly led to you receiving to, to That's outrageous. Cancer, right? they, that wouldn't happen. You know, it's outrageous enough that you give people cancer through their occupation, but that you won't even pay for its care. Well, you know, honestly, so some of the folks that we talked to in the first film, um, they're, uh, you know, surviving spouses, and they had no idea what yep. their significant other was doing at this plant. And so it was they classified. They were classified. classified. They weren't allowed secret. to tell their wife. They weren't allowed to tell anybody. And so, you know, this wife is, she's trying to pay the bills, and, um, and she has no idea. And so she has to go to his friends, and they don't want to say anything. And so it's this, right. it's, it's these folks that have no like, connection yeah. whatsoever, and they're, you know, they're just trying to get, get that help. Right. So how long this is? You were talking about this earlier. Uh, how long you're you're you finished the film? The prime filming is done, right? Yeah, yeah. Principal no. photography is done. Um, we we're gonna go probably go back a little bit, do a little bit of shooting to sort of wrap up things. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, our interviews have been shot. Um, so what's the next thing? So right now we're prepping for uh, for our rough cut to start post production, which is really exciting. So, okay, and that's yeah. when you do all the technical stuff that pulls yeah. it all together and makes it into a look like a movie when you see it on television. I see it yeah. or on the movie theater screen or something. Great. Um, and uh, when do you expect to be able to show this as a film? Well, uh, we are expecting picture lock in May of 2020. Um, that's when it's all done, right? And to so go. that's, yeah, that's when we're all locked and then we'll be doing like the color and yeah, basically. How about that? What kind of, are you planning yet or talk, thinking about it? Do you, do you dare think about the opening? Yeah, premiere. yeah. I mean, I've been thinking a lot about, about impact campaigns um, today, yeah. actually. I was at this event, and I was thinking so much about what our impact campaign would look like. And we actually started working with a group called Beyond the Bomb, mm -hmm. and I'm really oh, happy cool. about it. Um, yeah. And we've done a couple of um, a couple mm -hmm. of screenings of uh, our, our, our longer teaser with them, yeah. um, and we've had a really, really great relationship so with them. So how can people find out more? So just uh, just head on over to werewolfproductions.com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. Just look for Rocky Flats Film, mm -hmm. Twitter Rocky Flats Film, and then Instagram Rocky Flats Film. And uh, you can contact me. Um, my email is nancy at werewolfproductions.com. What should in the last twenty seconds? What should people know about America's nuclear weapons system? Well, we're about to start building more bombs, um, and uh, in. Uh, New More Mexico, triggers, yeah. yeah, New Mexico, and also South Carolina, and so it's about to be restarted, and so we don't want there to be another Rocky Flats. All right, thank you very much, Nancy. Okay, thanks very much.